the best of marble floorings, luxury fittings, a star-rated green project, acres of lawns and so on. You go looking for such specifications in the property you want to buy. But even though this will be the costliest and the longest investment of your life, you hardly spend any time to check whether that project is structurally designed and built to withstand an earthquake or any other natural disaster. As Vasudha Sharma finds out, even the industry is in the dark with respect to building earthquake-resistant housing and even our codes lack the spine. Take a look. About 15 months back, the National Disaster Management Authority had claimed that India's Himalayan belt had developed enough strains to cause an earthquake of 8 or a higher magnitude that will end at least 8 to 9 lakh lives. The question therefore is not when an earthquake will strike, but if an earthquake strikes, will our homes still be standing? The answer to that lies in India's building code which according to experts, hasn't kept pace with the kind of structures being built today. The Bureau of Indian Standards has not updated the National Building Code for the last 10 years. There exists no mechanism in the building codes for safety certification of buildings from natural disasters. And the most alarming gap is the absence of a specialized seismic code for tall multi-story buildings, which means anything from 10 floors to say 50 floors is treated the same in the code. Earthquake engineering expert Sandeep Shah's petition in the Supreme Court challenged the Indian government's lack of preparedness in the event of an earthquake. Shah alleges inaction by the NDMA towards strengthening the building codes and disseminating life-saving information to the public. NDMA in 2010 had spoken of categorizing buildings on the basis of their performance levels, just like green buildings are rated on their savings. The highest level is called fully operational. Such buildings do not encounter any damage and can continue functioning even during an earthquake. The second performance level is immediate occupancy. Such buildings develop minor cracks but can remain operational after the earthquake. The third performance level is life safety. A building of this performance will be significantly damaged but does not reach the state of collapse and can be made functional after retrofitting. And the last performance level is collapse prevention. Such buildings suffer major damage and will witness imminent collapse. But even five years since, these guidelines have still not been incorporated in the seismic code, which at present only prescribes buildings to achieve the minimum level of collapse prevention. Every Indian citizen should be knowing that the building he is purchasing or renting or even the building he is entering in for a meeting to attend a meeting what category of earthquake resistant it is. Just this information, without you having done anything on the structure, just this information will save lakhs and millions of people because they will exactly know how they are supposed to react when the earthquake strikes. And once they do it, their lives will be saved. In recent months, the NDMA long criticized for having become a parking lot for the retired has swung into action. The centre has appointed domain experts to bring in fresh energy into the NDMA and in recent weeks has initiated a complete rewrite of the building code. Retrofitting of existing buildings is being studied and latest seismic safety concepts are being considered. But experts warn that such efforts will still collapse if the enforcement is weak. There is a feeling amongst almost everybody that these codes should be uh, legally binding for all these stakeholders, especially the builders. Uh, there is uh, right now uh, no such provision, uh, but what we need probably to do is we have to categorize these into two parts. One is the course, and another is the specifications. Course should be legally binding and specifications should form as a guidelines. NDMA's other ambitious reform was to establish a techno-financial regime where loan applications will be decided upon after the government or lending institution undertakes a structural audit of the proposed or existing construction. But even this has been scuttled in a debate with the Reserve Bank of India. The most critical reform needed today is how we retrofit our existing building stock and how we'll get people to demand homes that are built to last. With camera persons Prem Singh and Pooja Arya, Vasudha Sharma, NDTV. 
It's worrying, isn't it, that the building that you might be living in doesn't even meet the very best basic uh, requirement of actually earthquake proofing. Ani Ray, Managing Director, ACC India Private Limited and KG Bhatia, CEO of DCAT Technologies, join me now to find out how unsafe are high-rise buildings across the country and specifically North India, which seems to be falling in the seismic zone. Uh, Mr. Ani Ray, your building, uh, really, really tall structures, both in the NCR and MMR. Tell me, what is it that we should be worried about or are we just worrying too much? Well, uh, when we have a building, uh, we see a very tall building. Uh, no, we are always looking at the beauty, architecture, but it's fine that someone uh, looking at the structure, uh, structural configuration, especially earthquake. Now, I go to two things. Uh, earthquake zones is as per IS 1893 code for India, but basically all buildings, those are designed not as earthquake proof, but earthquake resistant. So that's a, there is a basic difference in that. So no building can be earthquake proof. If it is earthquake proof, it will be such a robust structure, no one can live in there. So depending on the occupancy and this, I mean the building as designed, okay? So okay. when you are looking at a high rise building, generally, I, contrary to popular belief, it is more safer. I agree. We did a huge debate and discussion and this is something that was uh, noted by some of the prominent architects who came on the show that actually it's the low-rise buildings which probably uh, would be exposed when, if at all there is an earthquake, God forbid there is one. It's not the high-rise. But then if I look at it, uh, the story that uh, our reporter has done clearly outlines that we are not meeting the highest code when it comes to buffering ourselves from any possible damage to the structure in case of earthquake, isn't it, Mr. Ray? Are we, are, yes, aren't we very uh, far away from international standards, let me say? Uh, yes and no. I think we are we are little far away, but not very far away. Mm -hmm. But uh, the problem is the implementation of the code. We have a we have an Indian building code, but except for a few buildings, who is uh, looking at the implementation? I mean, who is looking at the approval? Who is looking after the implementation in the construction side? That whether the guy who is constructing, he is putting the right uh, methodology, what it is uh, mentioned in the design. Okay. When you are looking in abroad, like in Dubai, uh, municipality comes and checks before each concrete, they come and check. And after that, only when he gives an approval, then only you can cast the concrete. But here, no one, I mean, people are more bothered to see at the FSI or the setback, but not the structural calculation. All right. But it's a good warning coming in from you that please also look at other things. Uh, Mr. Bhatia, yeah. now if I look at it, NDMA only decides the last performance level decided, uh, which is the collapse prevention. Now, is that, isn't that worrying that it's, it's a very, very first level of security against an earthquake and shouldn't be, you know, these codes have to be upgraded very, very quickly? We are <coughs> upgrading these codes mm -hmm. regular, on a regular basis. Okay. Even the 1893 part one, which is for buildings, that's also recently been upgraded. It was came in 2002, latest one, now coming in 2005. And again, again getting uh, upgraded. Okay. So code wise, I don't see any problem in general. Problem becomes implementation. Mm -hmm. Implementation, as Anil Ray uh, rightly said, implement that means you're, you're getting the structural designs done. There are agencies who can do that very well. They can do that, mm -hmm. but structural designs checking done that becomes a question mark. All there right, are so, very less so number of people. Who should be doing it? I, 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 it? Should should an approval of the project itself be dependent on the fact that you have all the you follow all the codes and then somebody should also come and check it later? Yes, they have to be implemented. We follow all the, all the codes. That means the designers follow all the codes. That has to be checked, first of all. Mm -hmm. And then we do not have, uh, you can say, everybody who is designing it is not an expert in earthquake engineering. Okay? So we need these uh, designs to be checked by an earthquake expert. An earthquake expert. Yes. Anire, are there enough people who can do the, or bring those checks and balances in place? Uh, okay. Do we have the expertise uh, across you, the country? Because, you know... Uh, you have buildings being made almost every day across the country. Yes, yes. Uh, 
I, the, I think the, there, are, there are experts available, but it's the question of the methodology. Like uh, when you building a, when you design a building, even it's a ground plus one story building in Dubai, you need to send it to the municipality and then a third party he checks it. Also municipality have the engineers who to check it. Here though, I mean if you are submitting a design, then uh, there should be mandatory to be checked by another third party and if, even the municipality don't have their experts but mm -hmm. they should have a panel of experts outside experts who should be able to check it and there are plenty of people available let's okay. say i'm a consultant or a, i'm an engineer i can always check if i can make a design i can always check somebody else's design okay fair enough now just yeah. rate across the country how do you i mean do you think that uh, most of the developers currently are following good norms and, and like you said, we are not very far away from the global standards. So people should be rest assured that their property is not going to be damaged in a big way if they are buying, especially in high seismic zones like the National Capital Region. Uh, yes. Uh, okay. The uh, National Capital Region, as you know, it's a zone four. I mean, that's quite higher. I mean, compared to even Mumbai is zone three. Mm. So zone four and above, I mean, it's a quite dangerous. So it requires to be mandatory that all the structural calculations to be checked uh, with, a, with a proper expert. And then only it should be given the approval for the construction or even for a developer. Unless and until we fulfill that and someone monitors, even in the construction phase, the, those which has been designed, it has been implemented. So I think time to time that, that is very much required. We will keep lobbying for uh, checks and balances and of course uh, the correct approval processes to come into place. Thanks again for joining us today.